This may look like a forward operating base down range, but in reality, it's the middle of the Mojave Desert at Fort Irwin, California. This is where military from around the world come to sharpen their skills for the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan. All right, so let's get ready to gear up. For Staff Sergeant Jessica Wilkes and Master Sergeant Shane Pomo of First Combat Camera, it's a first ever opportunity to train in what is affectionately known as the sandbox. Can't forget the most important part. Where would be the best place to be for right now? I would say maybe up on a hill. You can kind of see every, pretty much the whole thing, what's going on. OK. For Sergeant Wilkes, the exercises at Fort Irwin are a chance to expand her skills as a combat camera videographer, skills honed on two previous deployments. All right, hey, let's get ready to roll here. Roger. My first tour would be more like uh, what they say, kinetic. I would go out with uh, an infantry unit and we would go into a house and clear a house and look for whatever we're looking for. The last tour was more like humanitarian, going out and passing out food to people that needed it, handing over vehicles. I was there when they handed over one of the provinces that I was working in to the Iraqis. So it was more like well, watching it all be rebuilt. I've seen a drastic change from the beginning until my last time that I went. To me, it feels pretty natural to have a weapon and a camera. I would not be comfortable going out without a weapon because we are expected as well to be able to protect ourselves and, you know, the people with us if we, if we ever need to. And I know that if the situation arise, that I wouldn't have a problem putting down the camera and having to fire back. The people that I've worked with in this unit and the stories I've heard and the things I've seen from them and the stuff that I've gotten to do myself, it's amazing. We're full of a bunch of amazing photographers and videographers that go out and without thinking do this stuff all the time. They go out and they shoot amazing video and amazing photos and in the worst situations you could possibly imagine. And they come back with this great imagery and I just, I've never been prouder to be part of any unit than this one. I try to do when I go in, unless I'm given a specific task to document, I try to get shots of the individuals. Master Sergeant Shane Cuomo, a still photographer with first combat camera, is a veteran of five deployments. His images speak volumes as to his passion for detail, history, and mission. I just try to get shots of what they're doing that kind of shows the story or tells the story of what their mission is. So I, I try to cover as much as I can within reason. I mean, I couldn't just be standing up during a firefighter and trying to get pictures. Sometimes I'd be ducking down and like holding my camera up just in front of somebody because if I get shot, then that's a problem that they have to deal with. And I try to be as less intrusive as possible. Having the lens in front of you is it kind of desensitizes you a little bit. You're kind of focused on I don't know, composition or exposure and that kind of thing. So for me, yeah, I don't really realize what's going on until maybe afterwards, until maybe I look at the pictures and I'm like, oh, wow, that's what was going on. But uh, there's a disconnect there. Why, why all that craziness is going on? And you have that camera up to your eye and you're, you're trying to do your job. So yeah, there's, it doesn't really bother me at all. Master Sergeant Cuomo remembers his photos with the same eye for detail as when he captured the image for the first time. That is the actual Battle of Samara when those guys rolled in and cordoned off part of the city. And they were getting attacked and they were returning fire. And what the funny thing about that is that the shooting had all stopped and uh, the commander said, hey, everything's done, looks like every, everything's clear. If you want, you can go ahead and get out. and." get some shots. I say, oh, okay. So I jumped out and uh, I kind of took my time going around the front of the, I didn't go in the front of the Bradley, but I walked off to the side of the Bradley. And as I walked off to the side, nothing really went on. So I got a few shots of uh, some Bradleys off in the distance, but with shooting with the night vision, it's kind of, it's not that great. So I turned towards to shoot 
our Bradley, and then all hell broke loose. And there was all kinds of firing and stuff like that. So I got a few shots off, and then I kind of hit the ground and got back into Bradley after that because I was, I was very exposed. That is in ancient Samara. There was a patrol going through that, and I guess uh, they used to hide weapons and things like that, so the army had to go through and patrol all that. So that guy had gone up the tower and was checking to see if there was any weapon stashed or anything like that, and then uh, I saw him coming down. Uh, so I just waited and waited and waited until and then I got the shot. That was the same, that was ancient Samara. And they were um, actually getting ready to mount up to go back home. And uh, uh, yeah, I just saw that moment. I was like, wow, that'd be a great silhouette shot. You know, I saw the sun was going down. And uh, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was. It was a very peaceful moment. Like, and plus, it was like towards the end of the day, the mission was over. And it had been an all day mission. So I still had to get back and edit and all that. So I was like, so it, very fitting for closing. I grew up in the Air Force, and I had actually met a combat cameraman. In, in Italy where I grew up and I, I talked about maybe joining the Air Force as graphics because I really liked art. I was into drawing and stuff and I uh, said don't do that. You want to be a photographer. You want to go combat camera. You want to be a photographer. So I did. So I spent about five years at base level with, uh, you know, I had really great supervisors and just uh, really good mentors that really pushed me and, um, you know, encouraged me to go to combat camera. And so that's what I always wanted to do since I came in. And so when I finally got the opportunity to come to Combat Camera, I jumped on it and went. I love it. It's a great job. This is my first time ever going to an Iraqi police graduation, and I didn't know that at the end they just get excited and they dance and they sing, and I didn't know any of that. So it was exciting for me to actually capture those moments um, when they were really excited and happy to actually be able to take care of, you know, provide security for their country. When I walked up, that's how I saw it. Once you get up the steps, the entire bottom and the entire top is, is mirrored. So it's, it's really bright and it's shiny. And so people usually don't shoot that shot because the rest of it is so spectacular. So they usually go up the steps and then they start shooting. And, but I didn't do that. I was more intrigued by just the shapes. And then there were some security guys going up the steps thought, okay, this would be a good opportunity to kind of show the steps, you know. So I composed it pretty much exactly as I shot it. Two members of Combat Camera, two unique experiences, each with his or her own path ultimately leading to the same location. And when I joined the Air Force, um, I was able to select it as a job. When I went to the military entrance processing station, Went down there, talked to them about the kind of jobs that I would like to have, uh, which would be in the business field, because that's what my bachelor's was in, was business um, management. They didn't have any of those jobs available. I had a supervisor who asked me, what did I really want to do? So I picked up an errand magazine and kind of went through it and was like, I'd like to do this. I'd like to just travel and shoot and tell stories. And they said, we have combat documentation production specialists. I said, oh. Okay, that sounds interesting. Tech Sergeant Derek Good and Sergeant Sharonda McCoy are assigned to DIMOC, the Defense Imagery Management Operations Center stationed at the Pentagon. DIMOC is responsible for the hundreds of thousands of photos and hundreds of hours of video shot around the world each year. What Sergeants Good and McCoy have in common is experience in the field. Where it differs is what they see through the lens of a camera. I heard so many stories from um, my fellow combat photographers in my unit that had already deployed. And all I could think of was that I wanted my own stories to tell. That is a fun day for us. Uh, we go to the markets, um, do, do our patrols through the markets, talk to some of the families, play with the kids. It's a patrol, but it's more of a a fun patrol because we actually get to interact a lot. We're not kicking in doors or searching people's homes and trying to find stuff. We're just doing a regular routine patrol. I look for detail and I look for the moment, which is you know what we're taught in photojournalism school is trying to capture the moment. So that's that's really kind of what I consider like one of my stronger suits is being patient and just kind of waiting for the moment to happen and being able to capture that shot. 
it was kind of a sad story. It was in Laos. I was working with the Joint PLW MIA County Command at the time, and we had about 100 workers with us, and one of the workers was the grandmother of the little girl. And so the little girl would just always be off in the corner by herself. And the Lao people are very friendly, but the villagers really seemed to kind of shun this little girl, and we couldn't understand why. And they explained to us that um, her mother died during childbirth, and because of her blue eyes, they thought that might be a curse. These are just local villagers in Laos, and so they don't, not really sophisticated or anything like that. Um, the father died within a year of that, so they basically took the little girl out into the woods and left her to die. Her grandmother went and got her, brought her back, and they were actually living in a cave right outside of the village. I never had to pick up my weapon, but I had to drop the camera during a um, mission. I was in the house, and we were just doing a regular knock on doors and talk to people, see if they knew um, of any insurgents in their neighborhood. And we just started hearing gunshots just lighting it up. So at that point, we had to move out of the house and move to an area where we could help those people and also be safe, but help out our fellow soldiers. Sandstorm and Cutter, and it was, they've come in so fast. It was the first one I experienced when I was there, and they come in so fast, and they're so intense that, yeah, I was out for quite a while trying to get the shots and keep my equipment clean and get good shots. I really felt like that basically summed up what that day is like. It's because a lot of people ask, why don't why aren't they wearing protective equipment? Well, they didn't know that they were going to be walking through a sandstorm when they walked out of their tent. I mean, it comes in just that fast. So that's, that's what I was trying to show. The name really gives it away, combat camera. When all is said and done, many of these men and women are on the front lines, documenting, capturing, photographing, that exact moment that can literally take their breath away. I wasn't looking for the, the combat experience, but then once I found out that that's where you're going to be taking the best shots and that's just seemed the most exciting to me, then after that I really wanted to deploy. So I started looking for those options. Specialist Evan Marcy of the 55th Signal Company was sent to Afghanistan in July 2009. It was not his first trip overseas, but it was his first on the front lines. As a photographer over with the infantry guys, you're definitely looking at the environment differently than they are. I mean, they'll just glance at it and be like, oh, that's nice and look on. But you know, as a photographer, you can't just take the photo of the scenery. You know, you want to get the guy in front of it doing something that reflects that. So, of course, yeah, I'm looking at them and the way that they act so I can capture them doing what they do. Specialist Marcy wanted to go where he could get the best shots and had discussed with a buddy about the moment where calm turns to combat. We talked about it and talked to a few people, of course, got very strong responses like, oh, no, you have to, you have to shoot back or, no, no, you, you can take photographs, you know, it's fine, it's fine, you know, that's your job. What Specialist Marcy would soon discover downrange is that sometimes it's not a situation you can plan for. I'd say it would take six months to a year to really be well stabilized. Specialist Evan Marcy was on his first mission downrange in Afghanistan. When the fighting started, he dropped his camera and picked up his rifle. But the camera was, I mean, around my neck to my side the whole time. So it was accessible and I still knew it was there. I mean, the thought did cross my mind a few times, but I was definitely concerned about using my rifle and keeping it up. Uh, yeah, keeping it at the ready and after actually being shot and injured um, there was a lot of thoughts of course running through my mind and um, you know just trying to get out of there the camera was actually hanging from my neck off the stretcher and I was thinking like wow this would be great if I just put the camera up took a shot of the way my injury looks and these people carrying me behind it because the the sun was out right, you know, a photographer, you're always waiting for the, the sun to be at a certain angle and the way that it lights everybody, and I was like, okay, wow, this is perfect. Specialist Marcy didn't get that particular shot, but nine months after he was injured in Afghanistan, 
is only looking ahead. Hey, we got your boat ready, man. <laughs> Since I've been back, it's been good. Uh, I was never angry at any of the situation, really. I just, you know, knew couldn't be changed. Just got to keep driving on, you know, figure out some way to just keep using my energy and trying to go day by day. You didn't even warm up or anything. When I went to the kayak class, they say, you know, okay, kayak's less buoyant than a regular boat. A lot of it you're going to flip over. So they show me, you know, flip upside down and then you get out. And then after that, they just tell you how to flip back over. A lot of it is the hip snap, but a lot of it is really the way that you move your body across the boat. It was all new to me because I didn't realize kayaking was like that, but it was something that seemed exciting and interesting. So I was like, okay, you know, show me how. I wouldn't say I'm really competitive, whereas if I'm always trying to win, but I am competitive even with it be photography or just any other kind of sport. Five, four, three, two, one, half. I'm competitive where I like to be challenged and if somebody else is challenged, you know, wants to challenge, it's just more fun to challenge each other. I never really care about, you know, who's the winner or nothing. It's just better to kind of challenge each other so you could both get better. I've always known that with sports or even, you know, photography a lot of times. Although he's temporarily put down his camera and picked up a paddle, the images specialist Marcy has taken live to tell the stories of his time in the field. That photograph is, um, I think it was a patrol base or either a combat outpost that I was at. And the soldiers there, they'd go out on a mission all day and I'd go with them. And then we'd come back at night around dinner time. They'd all have stand to and stand to would be all the soldiers you put on all your gear and you'd be kind of on alert because it was the most likely the time that the enemy would attack us so everybody had their positions around their posts where they'd be in the sort of a watchtower post on each corner so every night I was out there with the guys so the photograph was just of the view of what these guys were looking at all night long just scanning the area waiting to see if something happens One of the missions that that team had gone on was to check out a water pump. All of Afghanistan, they're still using, you know, everybody's growing their own crops. A lot of the job of the Army, the, all the missions that we were doing were we were going to the local areas, finding out what they need for their community, and then help them along the process. And, you know, there would always only be the men around that would talk to the soldiers, you know, or, and then there would always be the little boys would always follow around, you know, always just be interested, always looking and just trying to, I guess, learn you know, from their parents what, what's going on around. And the photograph was just of one of the little boys in the, sitting on a molasses dish that they make the molasses on. So he was following us around the whole time, you know, and then there was just one moment where he sat there and he was like, okay, you know, he, he, this is boring. <laughs> he kind of got the picture. This photograph was up at the mountain in Hajibad. Once we finally met with the village elders and sat down and they spoke with everybody, we learned that the company that was going to patrol base to help pull security while we were gone had gotten attacked and um, one of the soldiers died and two of them were critically wounded. And we had to come back down from the mountain, kind of just race down it to go to that area. And we knew by the time we get to that area, you know, the enemy would be gone, but we went there anyway and we had gotten there went up the mountain and um, the LT that I was with, that's what the photograph was, he had stopped and actually the one truck that was hit was still sitting there and it was on fire. So it was burning and he was just paused at the top of the mountain and was looking down at the one truck that was on fire. This photograph was during a key leader engagement. A lot of them were the same where everybody's sitting around in a circle and they're all talking to each other. The men from the village with the commander of the company I was with and local Afghan army commander and there would be different soldiers and sometimes soldiers from different uh, countries that would also be there and they'd always be speaking. And then on the outside, of course, there was always the kids. A lot of the kids would come and they'd serve the chai or they'd serve kind of little candies, you know, and pour, every, pour it for everybody and then just kind of sit on the outside and watch. And that photograph, um, I was sitting and that was from one of the children that was sitting on the outside 
and I was watching him and I noticed he had a tattoo in his hand and I thought that was kind of uncommon that the one, you know, person at such a young age had a tattoo in his hand so I just took a photograph of him relaxing while everybody else was speaking. For one of our training we went along with the Canadian Army who was getting ready to go to Afghanistan also and they were a kind of infantry company and they were all had their different training missions going on and our job was to kind of embed with them you know, as we would during a uh, regular deployment and document them doing all their stuff and that photograph was at one of the ranges I had spent the whole day at the range with them and I'd be up close to the, the people that were firing and I'd go from one area to the other area you know and it was all day really long and then I had walked far away to um, where my friend was kind of all the way back behind the firing line I guess where they I think it was where they were serving dinner and I walked all the way down there and I just turned around and saw how the the, the sun had come down which is always you know makes the, the sky look pretty and I think when the sun is down and just the whole sky is lit up and you know it's just like okay I have this time to make the perfect photo you know take some really great photographs but I thought I was so far away that it wouldn't work but it did work I think <laughs> For Sergeant Wilkes, the exercises at Fort Irwin are a chance to expand her skills as a combat camera videographer, skills honed on two previous deployments. All right, hey, let's get ready to roll here. Roger. My first tour would be more like uh, what they say, kinetic. I would go out with uh, an infantry unit and we would go into a house and clear a house and look for whatever we're looking for. The last tour was more like humanitarian going out and passing out food to people that needed it, handing over vehicles. I was there when they handed over one of the provinces that I was working in to the Iraqis. So it was more like well, watching it all be rebuilt. I've seen a drastic change from the beginning until my last time that I went. This may look like a forward operating base downrange, but in reality, it's the middle of the Mojave Desert at Fort Irwin, California. This is where military from around the world come to sharpen their skills for the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan. All right, so let's get ready to gear up. For Staff Sergeant Jessica Wilkes and Master Sergeant Shane Cuomo of First Combat Camera, it's a first ever opportunity to train in what is affectionately known as the sandbox. Can't forget the most important part. Where would be the best place to be for right now? I would say maybe up on a hill, you can kind of see every, pretty much the whole thing, what's going on. Okay. Master Sergeant Shane Cuomo, a still photographer with First Combat Camera, is a veteran of five deployments. His images speak volumes as to his passion for detail, history, and mission. I just try to get shots of what they're doing that kind of shows the story or tells the story of what their mission is. So I, I try to cover as much as I can within reason. I mean, I couldn't just be standing up during a firefight and trying to get pictures. Sometimes I'd be ducking down and like hold my camera up just in front of somebody because if I get shot, then that's a problem that they have to deal with and I try to be as less intrusive as possible. Having the lens in front of you is a, it kind of desensitizes you a little bit. You're kind of focused on, I don't know, composition or exposure and that kind of thing. To me, it feels pretty natural to have a weapon and a camera. I would not be comfortable going out without a weapon because we're expected as well to be able to protect ourselves and, you know, the people with us if we, if we ever need to. And I know that if the situation arise, that I wouldn't have a problem putting down the camera and having to fire back.
The people that I've worked with in this unit and the stories I've heard and the things I've seen from them and stuff that I've gotten to do myself, it's amazing. We're full of a bunch of amazing photographers and videographers that go out and without thinking do this stuff all the time. They go out and they shoot amazing video and amazing photos and in the worst situations you could possibly imagine. And they come back with this great imagery and I just, I've never been prouder to be part of any unit than this one. What I try to do when I go in, unless I'm given a specific task to document, I try to get shots of the individuals. 